Hey everyone, it's Glenn Hardy, I'm back again. Um, this is a little bit of an impromptu uh, What's Going On podcast, Culbertson edition. Um, what happened was um, the elected band council has been having these Zoom meetings to inform people regarding the vote and the settlement offer and that sort of thing. And um, I joined in on one of the Zoom meetings. I, I just wanted to hear what they had to say and see if I learned anything. So I sat through it, and at the end, they had uh, some question and answers, and so I asked, uh, I asked a couple of questions of the lawyer, and um, ended up being a little bit of a debate back and forth between myself and, uh, and the elected band council chief, Don Merkel. Um, so I don't want to, I'm not going to post the whole of the, of the meeting, and I wasn't going to post anybody other anybody else's questions that that's their business and but my own questions I think uh, um, I feel compelled to put out there in the public and the responses that I got from the questions that I asked and uh, so without further ado uh, here's a here's me in a zoom meeting on the elected bank council September 18th 2021 are there any other questions or comments? How do I ask a question? Go ahead, Gundahar. I'm not sure how to do that. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, so yeah. I've got a question for Alan. Yes, sir. So, like, I know you've read over the Simcoe Deed quite a bit, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, so I'm curious about what your legal position is or why you say that the <clears throat> Mollocks, the Bay Aquinian Bank Council, are the uh, rights holders and treaty holders to the land. Because the Simcoe deed clearly is not describing that. And the Mollocks the Bay Quinney Band Council has only been in existence for, I don't know, 120 years, and it was imposed on us. So we've got a huge population here in the community that don't participate in the Indian Act system at all, and we're being completely left out of this. And then you've got the Bay Aquini Mohawk ban list at Six Nations, who are heirs to the Simcoe deed as well, who are being completely uh, not involved in this. And that Simcoe deed says in accordance to our customs and usages. That's our customs, our culture, which includes our young people. Our youth are not even being uh, given the opportunity to have a voice about something that's going to affect them. And all the previous leases that we had the, the payments were divided amongst the people because we own this collectively. Now the money is going to be brought over and, and BMO thinks they're going to invest our money. That's our money, not BM, not Mogs the Bay Quinney. That's the Indian Affairs uh, made-up thing. I'm, uh, I, I'm curious as to why you're giving them legal advice that, and they're, in fact, uh, the land holders or title holders or treaty holders when... In the Simcoe deed, it says to the chiefs, the warriors, the women, and the people, that's the holders. What, why, why is it the, the treaty parts of it make sense and are legal and, and uphold, and then other parts are ignored? I now want to know what your position is, because it's really confusing to me. Well, my, my position is that the the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinty as a as a as a as an entity, you know, which is a band recognized under the Indian Act, is today the uh, the the lawful um, entity that is for whom the Tyndanaga Mohawk territory is held by Canada as a reserve. Now, if the community wants to um, have a different type of constitution and uh, and involve uh, sort of longhouse um, traditions, you have the right to do that as part of self-government. But right now, the self-government has taken the form of an Indian Act band, and that's what Canada recognizes, and that's that's who retains me, frankly. I mean, if, I, if I'm if i retained by the Chief Council, um, can I say, well, I, don't, I can't take your instructions because you're an illegal body? That's not my view, um, that they're an illegal body or an incomplete representative of the of the body of um, of people who are the who are the um, beneficiaries of the Simcoe deed rights. I mean, I think 
I, I, I get where you're coming from, and I know I know the same issue exists at the Grand River and elsewhere. Um, and it's it's not, it's not really my place to adjudicate on that. No, but yeah, Alan, you, the, I mean, I, Alan, I work for the bad. Sorry. Sorry, okay, Chief, are you going to say something? Yes. Uh, the other thing is the ratification process is not our own. This is what has to be done in order for Canada to, to accept that this is that the members approve of this offer. That's what the members are deciding. Is this a good offer and should we accept it to take this money for a partial settlement and get the 300 acres of, of land back under the control of the band? That's all. That's the question they're asking. And the, under the understanding, it's without prejudice to our legal position that, you know, that, the, the, that there's a treaty involved and we don't have to give up any rights or our negotiating position on the status of the land or the balance of the Culberson tract or any other claim that we have filed. And so the, the band has to answer that question. And if they don't, then can, if we don't follow the, that process that Candace says we have to follow, they don't ratify anything and give it that there's no land comes back and no money comes. Yeah. And then I guess, can, then, then can we even proceed to negotiate any further land resolution claims and get any land back? Well, we have a growing population, many people clamoring for land and, and programs and services and housing and stuff like that. The reality if, is, is if we're going to have to satisfy any of those needs, there has to be money and it has to come from somewhere. Yeah, but the issue yeah, is being... the, the businesses are not supplying the money to do all that. Well, Don, let me hold so on where, a does money, where does the money come from? Don, hold on a minute. Yeah. But the real, but the issue that I'm raising is about the the voice and the responsibility from the people and uh, and those varying. Um, okay. Sections. The, the, the and, people, and so if we're going to do something like this and we're going to continue to negotiate with lands, then everyone needs to be included and the process has to include well, our custom. Are. It's not. It's not. And you know it's not. So I don't want to get hard. Yeah, I asked Alan a question the, because I was concerned that what's it's it's illegal. It's a uh, this this land has never been under the uh, control of Mohawks the Bay Quinney because Mohawks the Bay Quinney didn't exist in 1837. And if we have our way, it won't exist in, in 2025. Like, so, so why would we want to participate in something that was going to cause us more trouble in the future when you can't even get uh, half the people to come out to vote because they don't believe in it? So you're, Alan's saying, I'm concerned. We only got 700 people. That's because we don't believe in this. And so we're like, well, wait a minute. Like, there's a other system of governance that operates here, and we all know that. But we don't okay, admit it. I, and I agree with you about the money. I know that. And I know about governance and about the programs. But what's happening here is you're trying to put this under the control of Band Council. That's under the Indian Act. This land was never under that, Canada. That, and then you just said it yourself. You just said the council's not yeah. selling any of the land. It's not your land in the first place. Seth, and I would ask, why has the traditional council not dealt with it then? Well, we we're starting, weren't we? Remember when the, the negotiations said, we've got to work together, don't we? And you know, just as well as I do, we're oppressed here. I know, but... Uh, the, 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 Mark Miller I, came I, I, here, I, spoke to me, and said that very words to me. He said, I know that the federal government participated in de destroying the traditional governance structure. So you guys are funneled all the money to do all the work, and then, it, and then we got to do the work with no resources. Imagine your job if you didn't get a paycheck, or that the well, lights the, weren't on, and there wasn't no internet, and there wasn't no... You got access to all that money to be able to do the job. So you say to me, well, if the traditional people are going to do it, how come they're not doing it? Well, because the resources have been cut aside, cut away, and, and the Indian Act system is the only ones that got running it. That's why. And it's illegal. Well, and you, then you sign an agreement that says, well, if this deal goes through, then if there's any opposition or if there's any liability, it won't go on Canada, it'll go on the MBQ. That's messed. Like, what do we do? Do we have, to, we have to initiate a lawsuit against you guys to be able to hold this up? Well, we find a solution together. It's a disaster. Well, I'm sorry for getting upset, but like you know, Seth, I think you should let the members make their decision. Where the council, the elected council's not deciding; the members are deciding. It's been set up so that the people don't even have the opportunity to speak about it. It's a package deal. You know, we, 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 uh, that's how Canada does business. I can, we don't dictate how they do business. So this isn't Mark the Bay Quinney doing this. This election. Yeah, and, uh, this is, uh, I think, this I is uh, think, Indian Affairs in Canada. It, well, you, you know what I think, Seth, is misunderstood. 
is that when in 1793, when the Simcoe deed was was issued uh, by uh, uh, John Graves Simcoe, there was a minute, and the the, the minute said it, the land was for the Mohawks who settled at the Bay of Quinney. I'm aware of that. I have a map that says the Mohawks will settle on the North Shore and the northern boundary will be left open for the Six Nations. I know the agreement. I read all the yeah, so. handwritten notes back and forth between John Desirano and them and the, and the, they weren't loyalists that they threatened to take Fort Frontenac. Yeah, I know about that. And I know that John Desirano didn't agree and that the Simcoe D was dropped off at his house and he wasn't home. We weren't even privy to the thing. Yeah, I do know no. that. And, and so the issue isn't even about, well, it's the Mohawks and not all the Six Nations, it's that it's the elected band council, Mohawks, the Bay of Quinney, who are not the title holders, and the organization is not legitimate. It's illegal. And we, need, elected, a, we need to work together as people, not as a council. And then but, you say, the, but the government only do business with the elected council. Well, I, I don't think that's true. So, Alan, do you have any other comments? Well, I mean, my my role here is not to <laughs> my role here is is not to um, decide on on who's right uh, on this point. I'm 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 a lawyer retained by the elected council to do a job for the elected council. From my perspective, getting the land back uh, under the control of, of the Mohawk people, however you want to define it, is a good thing. If you have internal political or constitutional discussions that you need to have on on uh, on a form of government, you know, I I'd be all for that. Um, but I can't I can't rule on who's right and who's wrong. The other thing is we are doing this in order to meet um, the requirements of the federal government. The federal government recognizes the Indian Act band, the Mohawks of Bay Twenty, recognizes the elected council. Um, so they, from their perspective, the members, as defined by Canada, as defined by the Indian Act, of the Indian Act band are the, are the people that they need to see support this, this settlement. And, um, you know, from, from my perspective, I understand that there are these, these broader, broader issues. And I don't, you know, I don't diminish the importance of what, what Seth's saying. Um, I don't, I, I understand that that the traditional form of government of, of the Six Nations people was uh, was destroyed by Canada. I, I don't doubt that as a historic fact, um, you know, but what, what, the, what the Mohawk people do going forward is up for the Mohawk people to do, and I just want them to have this land and have this cash uh, while they do it. Oh, we're not um, going to have that. This is going into Indian Affairs' hand. It's been handed over to Canada. Yeah. This land has never been owned by Canada. And now you're asking us to vote on this to hand it over to them. You understand that? And it's not I, going I, into I, the I, it's I, not I, going into the Mohawk people's hands. It's going into the Mohawks the no, Bay Quinney Bank Council. That's not the people. Yeah. Okay, we won't even have access I, to it. I, I, we won't even be able to get a house. Donnie talked about those houses and that lady talked about the house getting knocked down. Mm -hmm. I was one of those kids that went into those houses and we went and moved into them because there was no housing here. And you know they pointed yeah. guns at the kids in this community? And then they smash the houses with a wrecking ball under council's orders from the police here. And it'll be the same. This is a robbery. This is a trick. They're trying to get the people to admit to or to hand over the land and the money to, to the Indian Affairs and to Canada. And it's illegal. Because the treaty isn't for you. The treaty is for the Mohawk people. I agree. I'm not arguing that. But it's our clan system, and it's not completely destroyed. I'm a war chief. I was put in there in accordance to the way our customs work. That It's not gone. We're not all disappeared and gone. We're just being ignored. And, and I don't know what to do about that other than to get right forward. So I come here because I'm listening, and I listen to what's being said. And Don, I, I have a great deal of respect for you. And we've, we've always spoke... Uh, nice one another and you were kind to my family and my family's been kind to you but, but this issue is upsetting me because it's not including everyone's voice to talk about this together yeah. and to come to a solution and it's being blamed oh well Canada's, Canada's making us do it Canada ain't making us do nothing we want to go over. the reason that's for sale is because a bunch of us went over there and said you ain't doing this anymore and he can't even use that land 
It wouldn't be hard for the whole town to be in the same situation. I'm sure they'd all be willing sellers. But Seth, we'd rather not do business like that with our neighbors because all it leads to is our the police eventually coming with a court order to arrest people, to take them to jail. They go to court, they end up with a criminal record, and the Mohawk continue to have nothing. We're White not people ha- use no, it for nothing. Shannonville. We still don't have nothing. Well, again, again, the chief, for Chief Earl Hill, signed a memorandum of understanding to get to get the government to buy up that land. They they, they appoint based on what the Chief Hill put in place. Canada, the Indian Affairs had Public Works and Government Services Vic Leonard go around and buy up them houses, and they made a report to the council on how they were progressing. Because right now, when I got on council in 1992, back on council again. There was no houses bought, so they had to come once a month to council and make a report on how what they had bought or where the status of the discussions were with the, the people that had made improvements on that land. It took 17 years. As the land became available for sale, it came back under the control of the band. There, there were, there were um, environmental issues. Uh, the, part of the, the, the properties had to be returned environmentally safe. Uh, they were, they were, and some of the houses had lead paint. There was asbestos. There were health issues why people shouldn't be in those houses. And it was going to cost more to fix those houses. So the council said to tear them down. And so all, so the, 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 we've been offered a $24 million settlement on loss of use for the Turton Pen houses. And then there has to be discussion about the value of the improvements that the band kept. And so we formed a committee. Council didn't decide what was going to happen with the houses. They formed a committee of community members, and they decided who was going to get a house and, and to who, they, who they were going to sell them to. And the council accepted the advice of that committee. The council, the elected chief and council did not decide that. And so there were health, environmental health issues with asbestos, things that could make people sick. That's why those houses were torn down, and it would have been more cost-effective to build a new house than to try to remediate some of the conditions that were in those houses. That's why they were torn down. They got torn down while people were dragged out of them. But 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 but, but people broke in there, though, Seth. They didn't. They they didn't. You know, they, they were They were. They should have never been occupied because says, they weren't fit to live. In. Says the council. No, it says, it says the reports from. In- Inspect because part of the return of the property had to be an environmental inspection, and the environmental inspection said there were a number of health issues with those houses: mold, lead paint, asbestos. Like the houses in the subdivision. Well, so that, <laughs> that, on, that, that's right? what, that's why. So the houses <laughs> that were good, they kept, they kept and sold them, so. and the other ones that, that needed too much work, they tore them down. And then they moved them people like Miss Bredman right back on our land, anyways, just up the street. Well, that, that, again, that that's all part of that 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 other claim that we talked about that was fought the the eighteen twenty uh, claim under court. Yeah. So the the council filed that claim. We're expecting a decision, and on the golf course, I do intend to write a letter once we get an answer from Canada. Ask the minister of Crown Relations to reimburse the band the purchase price with the Dyes property when that became available for sale. Uh, our council bought that property, and the government reimbursed all but ten thousand dollars purchase price. We rented out the property and had a lot more money in our and the fund to help pay for the research that had to be done to be able to put the band in a position to file claims. That's what happened to the money. There was a lot of research that had and it costs expense involved with legal opinions to see is this a valid claim. To get to get to the point where the claim was ready to be filed in a credible way, that Canada could look at it all and the strength on the side of the Mohawks. All I'm saying is that transferring yeah. these lands to the to under the control of the council is in conflict it, it, with our it, 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 be- it belongs to the band. The council does not have the right to accept this claim. The offer is not being made to the council through the council, but the offer is to the band. And the band has has the is the one that has to answer. Do they accept this or not? It's yes or it's no. But Seth, I would strongly ask you to support it, and because it's an opportunity to get some of the land back while the rest is worked on. And when we had the community meetings, which there were long those people there, they said get the land back. The government wanted this land surrendered. As a matter of fact, after the protest, the only thing they told the council was that the only thing they would even talk to us about the band was a surrender. They said they would not negotiate under climate of hostility. 
that they would not bow to that kind of pressure. That was the, the, the answer that came from both uh, uh, Jim Prentice and then Chuck Strahl said the only thing they talked was about was the surrender. And because we were not having the benefit of their policy, Alan had to take it to court. I know. To get a rule. Well, so that anyways. so that's what they did. They played they played hardball well, over all that. Okay, that's what we're. we're and I and I so we still said our position. I, and and I said to the negotiator, I do not have a mandate from anybody to surrender any land. The council, the elected council, does not have the right to surrender land. Nobody does. It's only all of our members as a whole can do that, and I and they're not willing to do that. So the mandate has always been to get regain regain control, or not terminate our rights, or extinguish, and or, or let other people impose on them. But and, but we have to have a civil discussion with people that are there to make to make thing make it happen. Right, well, and unfortunately, you know, history has been unkind to our people. It's been unjust to our people. But we still have to work and, and try to make it work better for our people to get what they need. And the people here, the large First Nations, all, especially the Iroquois ones, need need a lot of more land because their population is blooming. Which means they're the they large go population. held into the malts the Bay Quinney. And, and everybody, and every place, don't have access and to every it. place, and every place that this has happened, where there have been you know fights and stuff like that, there's been a lot of media attention, but there's very little land came back. Gunasadagi, you know, uh, Douglas Creek. You know, up with us, they, but then finally they entered into a different type of negotiation in their council and got somewhere. But we're not, we're not surrendering any land. We're not extinguishing any title. We're getting something back under our control and the, the money for the loss of the time that we didn't have, the, the people didn't have the right to use it. And I guess what happens to it is really a, a people's conversation, in my view. I think the people got to decide that. And, well, I and think uh, that's the, the part that was missing in this vote. And so, so, but again, I don't have the authority to bind a future chief and council what they're going to say or do. I don't have that authority. It would be wise if they did that. And again, the chief doesn't get a vote, but our council, the council that's there now, said they would they would have a, a public meeting, public meetings about what should happen to the money. So the council felt it was best just to invest the money to let the, let it grow until the, those conversations can take place. And we've been handicapped with this whole COVID thing. To have a meeting, the, the the size of gatherings is limited, so we can't have a public meeting. So we've been somewhat challenged, but you know, again, and I do think we could have done a better job communicating. All right. Well, I'm going to get off here. Well, thank you very much for joining, Seth. I appreciate your comments. Yeah. Have a good day. Guys. I hope you'll support. It. I hope you'll support it. Hey guys, got to hear you again. Hope you love that podcast episode. I did. It was a lot of fun. Don't forget to like follow, share, you know, all that good stuff helps with the algorithm, helps get the word out. Um, and be sure to uh, send it to your friends. All right, thanks. Have a good one.